The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Guardian Radio AM. Today is Friday, Friday, October 18th, until after 11 o'clock in the morning. Once again, this is C.A. Nuri, and I shall be your host for today. Actually, I have a full slate today. Actually, I wanted, or I am going to have a conversation with community advocates, community activists. Um, we actually have members uh, of the Fort Charlotte community who are very vocal in the Fort Charlotte community. They protest and they write and they complain and they agitate and they highlight uh, issues. They commend issues on, on, on what is happening in that community. And I said, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that they, they, they are what I call pressure groups or what I call advocates in communities. And I said, man, I need to bring these people in to see why they are so vocal, why they are active inside the community, what are the various things that they are doing there, right? Or what do they, what, what they want to see? So I said, hey, I'm going to give them an opportunity to explain that. But before all of this, before all of this, let me read this ad. And with that, I'll be able to introduce my other guests, right? So I'm going to start this promotion early because big things is happening on Guardian Radio A. Not, I always say Guardian Radio AM because my name, my show, and Guardian Radio is similar. You know, Guardian Radio AM and then Guardian Radio. You're looking at me like, why? How, how is it so similar? Because CA? No, my show is not, it's not, it's not, the show is not called CA Nuri Show. Mm -hmm. It's called Guardian Radio AM. Mm -hmm. And the whole program is Guardian Radio. So there are times I do not say Guardian Radio. I say Guardian Radio AM because the vanity in me. I'm the star. I get that. That's okay. That one flew right over my head. This, uh, the person you hear talking is Stanya Davis, right? She's having a big show. Tell it to Stanya coming back on Saturday. Um, she had a hit show on Guardian once upon a time, and they bring her back to man, we need you back here. But I'm going to read the ad, which I'm normally going to read like during the commercial, but I'm going to start here. Your Saturdays are about to get a whole lot more interesting. Listen to that. Our all new Saturday lineup is here, beginning this Saturday on Guardian Radio. It is the eye opener, which starts at 9 a.m., will be joined by a whole new crop of shows. The first show is The Accredited. The Accredited uh, is from 10th Year Seniors. It's going to be starting at 11. Then after The Accredited will be The Happy Hour with Deandra Cartwright, and that starts at 12 p.m. Then this is where my guests come in. Then it's The Return, The Return of Tell It to Stania with Stania Davis, who's going to start at 1 p.m., and we have Stania Davis in studio today, and that was her voice that you hear in the background, not able to see the connection of uh, Guardian Radio AM and Guardian Radio, right? The shows are similar name, but that's okay. She have to deal with that on her show. And then after that will be the new show, Our Blue Bahamas. Our Blue Bahamas is going to be uh, aired by Brief, which starts at 2 p.m. And then all new editions of the uni uh, of University Drive. This is that UB uh, show. University Drive now is at 2.30. So they changed time. They are now at 2.30 p.m. It's going to be a full slate of amazing shows this and every Saturday on Guardian Radio um, FM 96.9. So now let's go to tell it to Stanley. Hi. Hi. How are you doing, Stanley Davis? I am. I'm doing really, really good. The, the, the cue is you're back. That sound kind of creepy. It, it's, it's October. <laughs> It's okay, October. okay, so, all so right. creepy is not a bad you. thing. It's not okay. a bad thing. Um, so tell the sign was a hit show on Guardian Once Upon a Time, and yet they call it back to say, "We need you. We need this. We uh, we missed the excitement. Bring tell it to Stania back." No. Um, what is your remind listening audience? What is your show mean shows mean focus? 
Okay, I like to say or whenever people ask me this question, I always have a little difficulty explaining it. So I usually just say that it's everything besides politics and religion. <laughs> so everything that falls in between. And that's what I used to talk about, religion and politics. Listen, y'all is carry on too bad, so I can't bother with those two topics. Mm. Mm, 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 not touching it. So this Saturday, right. you're going to be aired at what time again? At 1 p.m. Okay. And I assume that you have guests, or what would you plan to do coming well, this Saturday? What can I anticipate? Well, let's say this. Going back to what the show is about, on a serious note, it's really a show about me and you and everyone who's listening. It's a show... Um, where we talk about things that we don't usually talk about, but we really need to talk about. So it's almost like a life coaching, self-help, Dr. Phil, Oprah, Wendy Williams combined. It's going to be an interactive show where a lot of show, uh, a lot of callings. and I would like that because, you know, I like to tell people all the time, I'm not a life coach only because I like to help people. I'm a life coach because I'm nosy. I like people business too. And, and to remind yeah. the listening audience, you are a certified life coach. You get a degree in this. This is your profession. Hello, this is what someone. you do. Excuse me. Hi, hello, back at a big soldier. Um, yes, I am. I am a certified life coach. I also offer certification in life coaching. 26 coaches under me um, already, by the way. I've been doing this from 2009, and I think maybe even outside of fitness coaches, I may be the only one at one point at a long, for a long time who did it full time. Nice. Yeah. And so um, this um, show is basically a, 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 I'm trying to get the right word, a extension, an extension of what do you do as in yes. terms of life coaching? Yes, it is. It's definitely, and I also have a degree in psychology. Let me put that out there. So it's not just, um, you know, certifications, because sometimes, well, yeah, I'm a mash no corns, but sometimes, anyhow, moving right along. Mm -hmm. um, okay, yes, it is. A, it's an extension of what I do. So it's really about growth. It's about lessons in living and life. Um, we go all the way back. So sometimes, you know, we have to figure out, like, how did I really get here? So, for example, a stinky relationship, that's just a symptom. Mm. There's something else that's going on. Why do the same things keep happening again and again to me? Why am I still battling with my daddy issues and my mommy issues? And how has that impacted me? So we're going to go deep. And Saturday, you know, I was kind of battling, going back and forth with what the first show should be about. And so I said, you know what? Hmm. Maybe it should be, back, it should be about what I went through mm -hmm. and why or what led me back here, which is recovering after a loss. Like, what do you do? Mm -hmm. What do you do when things don't go the way that you wanted it to go? What do you do when you lost a loved one? What do you do when your daughter goes off to college? What do you do when, you know, you have all of these titles and labels? You, you know, this is who you think you are. But who are you outside of being someone's father or someone's son or someone's daughter? Who are you outside of being someone's wife? And so I had to figure all of that out. I had to figure that out. So you're going to be dealing with the real topics then? Yes. Not no crafted topics, no. but things what behemoths are going through. No, listen, we, we don't have time to play. We don't have time to play because there are a lot of people out there who are not living the life that they want to live, that they were mandated to live. And that's another reason why I'm back, because I'm mandated to be here, supposed to be here. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. A number of behemoths are, for lack of a better word, broken. Right. Or they're frustrated that life didn't happen like how they anticipated. Like right. life is be life in man. But listen, and, big time. And I know you had a huge following yes. when you were here last, right? Right. Uh, tell it to Stania. And I, I'm assuming that it's going to be a reconnection with those people who, yes. who depended upon the show, who you give avenue and so, solutions and ideas of what they could could have done, uh, could pursue to say, uh, unleash uh, or release yourself from, yeah. from such. Because, you know, okay, there's this show. I think it's a, it's a um, chef show. I think it's, maybe it's Chopped. I can't remember. I can't remember. It may be chopped. Can't remember the name, but you know they give you like one or two good items, and then you got like these little stinky items, and they're like cow testicles and all these other things, and then you have to make like this this fantastic dish out of just this you know a few good things, and then a whole lot of bad things. And so I see that this is what life is about. You may have some stinky things, but you got a couple good things, 
And it's just like that show. So now it's time for you to make a magnificent meal. Because as long as you're here, as long as you're alive, there's hope. I know earlier, and I know you're getting ready to leave again, right? To get mm. to the, the next job, right? Um, you said it's not a political show. But what if I have issues releasing myself from politics? Like I'm a po political junkie. Well, right? see, Can you at least help me? I could call in and say, man, I go into this withdrawal, man. I went for the general election and I need help. Right? Well, the, well see, so then um, you need to contact Stanley Davis, Eve's Journey Life Coaching Institute, um, for a private session. Mm -hmm. But even that, there's something going on with you because, you know, why are you idolizing someone? Why are you putting someone in charge of who you are? Now, listen, I, I need sponsorship. You ain't going to trap me with saying too much of things. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So, I'm going to leave that for the advocates. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I'm, I'm about to transition the show and go to the commercial. I want you to remind everyone, your show is this Saturday at 1 p.m. So yes. do all that spiel on how to get in contact with you. I know you had a Facebook page attached to your show the last time. So give all your, your information right now. Listen, even, you know, I was just talking about loss. Even the Facebook page got loss. So, seriously, it got taken away from me. But anyway, so I am on Facebook under Stanya D, and that's Stanya, S-T-A-N-Y-A-D-E-E. -E. And then I have a, a Tell It to Stanya page. Y'all try to go like my page, because I, I, I don't even know if I got 10 people on that page with liking the page. So do me a favor, please, right now, go to Facebook, Tell It to Stanya, like that, and then go to my personal page, and you can friend me or you can follow me. I'm also on TikTok under Tell It to Stanya as well. So I will be here, and that's this Saturday at 1 p.m. And, you know, we're going to be talking about how do you get back up? What do you do after you lost everything? What do you do after life, life, and then you get all mash up? Life is be life, though. Big, listen, big time, man. Yeah, uh, I appreciate it. I will be tuned in today, I mean, on Saturday, 1 p.m. That is correct. To just hear the tidbits on, I'm just not alone. Because sometimes yes. it's, it's, it seems like I'm, if I'm just by myself <laughs> living this life. So it'd be interesting to hear other people share their, their stories, their testimonies. And then you can give us ideas on what could, should we be doing at this time. Yes. Okay, that would be uh, Stanya Davis. Tell it to Stanya's uh, returning to Guardian Radio uh, Saturday at 1 p.m. It will join the huge lineup that Guardian Radio has on Saturdays. I mean, the lineup is huge. I mean, interesting shows nonstop. And of course, this is Stanya, uh, Stanya Davis and her return to Tell It to Stanya, which is going to be airing again at 1 p.m. Anyway, Guardian Radio AM with C.A. Nuri shall be right back. that thinks outside the box? Of course you are. From 10th Year Seniors, it's The Accredited, where we combine hard-hitting sports talk with top-tier pop culture takes. We're breaking down the plays, calling out the moves, and debating everything from the locker room stories to the latest TV obsessions. Premiering October 19th at 11 a.m. on Guardian Radio 96.9, step into the arena where real talk meets the culture. This is The Accredited. Tune in to Our Blue Bahamas, Brief's radio show every Saturday at 2 p.m. here on Guardian 96.9 FM. Join us as we dive into the critical issues on a mission to protect the environment that sustains our Bahamian way of life. Each week, we feature inspiring guests from the fields of education and conservation and highlight youth voices making a difference. Let's work together to advocate for sustainable Bahamas. Catch us on Saturdays at 2 p.m. on Guardian 96.9 FM and let's protect our blue Bahamas. For fast, reliable, and impactful printing services, look no further. Let Printmasters bring your masterpiece to life. We stand by our quality products that is second to none. Our affordable pricing and friendly, efficient staff makes Printmasters the ultimate choice for all your printing needs. We can deliver any type of printing services, from banners to booklets to business cards. You name it, we can print it. Let Printmasters bring your masterpiece to life. Located in the Nassau Guardian Building, telephone 302-2361. Love the show? Want to give your support? Become a sponsor today. Call 302-2300 for our rates and packages. That's 302-2300. Become a sponsor on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day.
Rhythm Sweet, come on! Here. Come on, sing with me, check it out Sometimes you feel like giving up and you work so hard But keep on striving, working until you reach that star I know it's hard to keep moving when you're climbing up a hill But keep on going, you can do it if you got the will Did you say? It ain't over until it ain't over. Actually, this is one of my favorite songs by KB. This is KB and St. Anne's School Choir, actually. I think this came out in 2004 or 2014, something there. Some, 2003, see? There you go. 2003. This is one of my favorite KB songs. And to know that St. Anne's Choir was that, that great for, for 14? What is it? 13. See, that's when you get uh, a producer who knows music. 2013, 2013 this song came out. And, and Aaron is writing it down right, right now, right? But today, I have some advocates and activists, right, for community development in studio. We have members of that Fort Charlotte community who have been outspoken. They're, they're active in their community. And I say, I will give them room. I will give them space in terms of what they want to do, what they want to see. Why are they so vocal? Why are they active, right? And think for things that is happening inside the community. I have actually Anton Wallace, right? I mean, he been complaining about the beach and cleaning it up for, for weeks, loud, posting everywhere, videos nonstop. And I have Johnny Gentles. I pronounced the last name right, Gentles? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, who's also a community advocate, you know, and she speaks on her platforms to make sure that her community has, has, has the attention it deserves. And I say, I will make room. And I'll make room for any uh, community ad ad advocates and activists out there who wants to have a platform just to speak on what it is they want to see in the community. Right, how they can um, um, develop their community. And that's why I have Erin here because Erin have a heap of ideas on what should be happening, and I, I will have her listen, listen to you, and then of course assist in the organization of of, of your community. But for the further ado, let me um, have um, Anton, who I'm familiar with, um, tell tell me about his associations, his programs, the objective of this of the Fort Charlotte area. Uh, advocates and stuff. Go ahead, Antoine. Well, thank you, CA and Aaron, for having us on. Uh, good morning, Bahamas. Good morning to all locally and globally. And good morning, Fort Charlotte. This Fort Charlotte is a love of mine. I grew up in the Stapleton Gardens area, and I have been living in the Fort Charlotte area for about 25 years. I started out uh, very young, um, with the sitting minister right now as his first personal assistant, and this is not political. This is just advocacy for Fort Charlotte. Um, I thought it upon myself and made recommendations to others. Um, I'm also a team captain for Fort Charlotte in specifically polling division number 10, which encompasses a bash recovery away all the way around to West Bay Street, through Sherman Avenue, back to Papua Track slash Ferguson Road, and back to West Bay Street. Um, conveniently, let me say this right away, we talked about the beaches you said, CA, knew earlier. We have four major beaches in Fort Charlotte. Let's start with Chunkanoo Beach. That's Nassau Street. Mm -hmm. Then we have the Fish Fry Beach. Then we have... Saunders Beach, which is my first love, and then we have Goodman's Bay. So those beaches are most concerning, especially Saunders Beach for me. There is a Fort Charlotte Community Development Association, which focuses on community development and uplift. Um, that's on Boyd Road. And then the branch itself is on top. So it's like a one-stop shop. I myself am the secretary elect for the association. Um, but putting that aside, I when I don't see things 
going my way or I want to agitate for certain things to happen, which will not happen if I sit down and just let things just go with the flow. I don't go with the flow. I like to advocate. Um, my background is in the classical arts. I'm a classical singer, conductor, spent 20 years in the United States touring, came back home, got involved with uh, well, one of the first members of the National Youth Choir, mentors like E. Clement Bethel, deceased, Cleophus Ardley Jr., deceased, Andrew Curry, deceased. So these were all of my mentors. And big shout out to Shakespeare in Paradise and uh, Dr. Nicolette Bethel and Mr. Burroughs and Anku Sarah, who I actually grew up. He's my fraternity brother, I, Omega Sci-Fi, from a little kid. I am so proud of him. So that is my background. Good. And of course, I have Johnny Gentles here. Also, you're young. I pull the mic a little closer to you. You're young, but you're directly mic sensitive um you are active in the short fort charlotte area but like i said you you're young and i don't see young people speaking out wanting change you know you volunteer you uh, you uh, speak to people in the community and i want to know what has caused you to be so vocal i don't think i can help it <laughs> you can speak directly into the mic right into like the this yes yeah, that's just it. like that um, as a young person now, mind you, I'm not as young as I look, mm -hmm. <laughs> get me wrong. As a young person, I think it's very important that we play a part in what is happening in our community and in our country. Um, if we sit back and allow all the old heads, no offense to anybody, mm -hmm. to have reign over everything, nothing is going to change. So for me, it's very important that I advocate for or express myself for my age group to add to whatever discussion or topic that's current. So we'll start with you. What have you been doing? Name me one or two things that you are interested in mm -hmm. or have particip participated in uh, the, or things that you want to be addressed in the Fort Charlotte area. Okay, well, I've worked with Mr. Terry Miller most recently. And he is the founder of BASH, which is Bahamas Association for Social Health, as well as Earth Village. And one of the things that we have been focus, focusing on um, is the, destruct the destruction of the Papal Track well field. Um, if you live through our area, you will know that um, we have a lot of flooding that happens through there and a lot of, um, yeah, Pretty much the flooding is, is really, really bad. And what Mr. Miller has been and myself have been advocating for is to not totally destroy the natural um, ecosystem back there that's going to help counteract all the flooding, all of the things that, you know, stop us as residents of the area from feeling it in such a major way. Um, another thing that I've been working on with Mr. Miller is the BASH Youth Build a Skill Program, which is a new initiative for him to help, um, I guess, wayward youth or young adults to find skills so that we keep them off the streets. They don't have to end up in BASH fighting addiction and um, finding something to do that's pretty much productive to society. And as a, as a young woman, yes. as a young woman living inside a community, um, um, and it's not, it's a transit community. I'm trying to get the right word. It's, it's not inner city because it's a residential, mm -hmm. but they have... But, but it, it's mixed, right? It's because mixed. It's, a, it's a degree of suburban. It's a degree of sort of city high end as you come to the, the, the northern foreshore. Um, so there's a suburban, there's an urban, element as well. Uh, and then there's the natural, right? And, and then there's this kind of rural space when we look at Bash and Earth Village. Mm -hmm. so you, it's, it's like a mixed community. You also have zoning is mixed as well. So you have some, I'm sure you have some single home only mm -hmm. zoning, which is you can't even have duplexes and apartments that may have shifted. Uh, and then you're gonna have a mix of commercial and residential. Uh, and there's like the little pockets of business and in those spaces what you'll see is like a, a zoning where you can have a business on the bottom and live on the top, right? Mm -hmm. And so not only you have the, the mixed area, suburban, 
urban, the sort of rural part, and then a, a sort of, ur uh, I, I like to call it like business in the city, but then you, you because you have that foreshore. And so it's mixed, and I imagine the zoning is also mixed within that district, that yeah. space. Yeah. So in a community like that, right, um, how is being active, an active advocate impacts the community? Because sometimes, like my community, uh, we tend to let just things happen, right? Um, we, Fox Hill, we have smaller communities, and we just take kind of care about our own enclave. And with your community being so open, different types of people are throughout. Simple thing as there's going to be a new hospital in that area. Is there any outcry from your, your age group? Is there any concern? Are you happy? Um, ha are you going to the meetings that the government is hosting? Mm -hmm. I want to know things like that. And as has anyone within your age group specifically organized, created an organization to, uh, to see, not pr necessarily protest, you know, but to advocate for the needs of the residents who are going to be impacted by it? So you say, look, we, we know we need hospitals. We just want to make sure that we don't get the, 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 the short end of the stick. We want to make sure that you understand and consider our needs in this process of changing our communities. Well, there's been nobody else that I know of mm -hmm. um, from my standpoint. But this, these are things that I've discussed with Mr. Miller himself because he's been the most vocal person that I've seen um, with regards to building this hospital. And also, it's not just building a hospital. They also want to tear it out and make more space for um, more homes, another like subdivision or something like that, more homes. So on the ground in your community, you are aware that it's not just the hospital project that the people are focused on. There's potentially another housing project, right? Yes. So like for me as an advocate, I want to know, is the housing project like a companion to the hospital project. Not to say the government is developing, but somebody has said, oh, if the government's going to build a hospital here, perhaps I could make a lot of money by putting new housing in here, potentially for doctors and nurses and specialists, right, in the area because they want ease of access to, you know, to the workplace. Uh, because then another question is, will that drive the housing costs up and make it more difficult for a re like indigenous residents mm -hmm. the people who, who who from here to afford to stay here mm -hmm. right and so I, when you said that is very interested um well I, I was speaking to somebody about this yesterday and actually unbeknownst to me apparently the plans for the housing happened before the plans for the hospital so I thought that was very, I just uh, found so that out yesterday. If I myself. could for a second, right, like, and then so now you could see, I could see you as an individual advocate, right? This is why, two things. As individuals, we can drive our passion project, right? But at some point, we need an organization mm -hmm. to be able to support the work of the project, right? So there's, is that, and then even if you have an organization, you need a system to be able to plug into to do your organizational work, right? I will say um, a lot of residents are not happy with the idea of the hospital being there. As you stated, this is a residential area, right? Mm -hmm. What is our streets going to look like now when we're ha we have sirens that are coming through that area like nonstop day and night. What is the traffic going to be like now? How is that going to change the culture of mm -hmm. Fort Charlotte? How will you ensure you have adequate parking, right, so that residents near the hotel aren't overwhelmed by people taking advantage of the street parking in the many instances blocking, right? Because mm -hmm. you, you go into the hospital, hospital. Mm -hmm. you're in a panic. Exactly. You ain't thinking clearly. And you say, saying, man, miss, I know you may need to get in your house, but I need to take my child inside mm -hmm. this hospital. How do we create systems that help the residents like live, maintain the mm -hmm. quality of life 
and accommodate this national project. Mr. Wallace, um, you've been advocating mostly all your life, especially loud and vocal now. And of course, Aaron brought in some conversations of what is happening. And we've seen, we've seen people in your community on TV um, raising concerns. I want to know what is your community doing um, in terms of organizing, in terms of expressing themselves, in terms of um, making sure people are aware of people power, what they can do? Uh, great question, CA. Uh, let me just uh, clarify that Nassau Street East is the boundary of Fort Charlotte. Go through Nassau Street, there's a shortcut through Cambridge Avenue, that's polling division number four. We take that back. Which one is Cambridge Avenue, sir? Uh, right there, right off of Nassau Street. Listen, use Bamboo, use, <laughs> use bamboo Shack as a landmark for me, please. There you go. <laughs> as you turn through Nassau Street from West Bay Street, mm -hmm. I think it would basically be the third or fourth corner on the left. Basically, right before you turn in to go towards the cemetery, that area right after that. Okay, so we get uh, the one way that you have to go in. When you turn on to Nassau yes. Street, there's a one way behind the hotel. Yes. You can only go east. Yes. Then, then you have... The one way that you can only go west that leads you on to Nassau Street. Right, and there's Meeting Street. Then, no, no, there's, there's, is that Delancey? Then there's Delancey. Right. And then as you go over the hill, there's Meeting Street. Right. And then there's the police station. Then. Right. Right. And right after that police station, there's a short, small little square cut in there. I think that's polling division number four, which takes you back to Nassau Street. Don't ask me how they did that. That's a little chunk of Baines and Grantstown that the Boundaries Commission has put in our constituency. We go back down Nassau Street. We go back down to... University Drive, mm -hmm. all the way down, all the way down JFK to Prospect Ridge, west. That is the cutoff point so for Fort Charlotte. Six legged round. We go west across the six legged yes. roundabout. We hit the two roundabouts on JFK after that. Now, now, that six legged roundabout is the boundary right there, which goes back towards JFK, towards the new bank of the Bahamas, takes you straight down, staying north to Prospect Ridge. Up Prospect Ridge to Goodman's Bay, back down West Bay Street to Nassau Street. That is Fort Charter. It's a, it is a humongous area with over 6,000 plus, maybe even a little bit more now, coming up in the next election. So those things are, that is a very big area. Now, what's happening with the area with regards, you know, I'm an advocate for the beach. Um, Papua track, I, I'm going to deal with number 10 issues right now. Okay, but before okay, you go right no there, problem. here's a question I want to ask. Are you an individual advocate looking at a specific issue, or are you a part of a community advocacy group that deals with various issues, and this is the specific issue right. you're looking at right now? I am a community advocate that deals with many issues. I was the one, along with a few other people, who initiated the Crime Watch for our community, which okay. we needed. because. We have a lot of tourists that live through there. As Johnny said, we have a serious flooding issue through there. I mean, maybe we may need sidewalks. I have a 15-point program and issues that I have put on paper that I have sent to the powers that be with regards to all of these different issues. Crime Watch is one of them. The flooding issues, uh, Papua Track, which I've seen some work being started to do. There's about to be, there are four lamp poles there now that have been put there. There is about to be lighting in Fort Charlotte at Papua Track Park there. Um, I've asked for bathroom facilities. These are only requests. The lighting should be there shortly. There's apparently even a plan in place for that whole area there. Are the, okay, are the residents, the general public, resident in that community, do they have access to the plans? Or are you just aware that there's a plan? I am aware that there is a plan, but there is no access towards the plan. Um, there are specific meetings that happen where the community can get involved. Um, I think more of that needs to happen, but these plans are in place. I mean, look at Saunders Beach, for example. I mean, Saunders Beach must have been the prodigal child, the, the let me throw you away. Junkano Beach is fine. Fish Fry Beach is now doing well. Um, Goodman's Bay is overwhelmed and doing booming. 
What I happened mean, to we, Saunders Beach? Hold on, pause. We can talk about Goodman's Bay. I just would like you to stick a pin right there because mm -hmm. you say it's good and booming. Uh, but we've talked a lot about... Okay, so we've talked a lot mm -hmm. about Goodman's Bay on on my show, mm -hmm. right? Uh, as a community advocate, though, right? I want to know what's your intersection with the other advocacy initiatives going on around Goodman's Bay? Because I, I tell you, things ain't things. Well, I would tend to agree the with you. The residents, the, like, I'm, okay, so I, on the other side of the island, I have an expectation that when I go to, to Goodman's Bay Beach, there's public parking available to me to find out that there's a business Amen. that's directing its staff to take up the public parking is a big deal for me because I get drive all the way out here to find out there's nowhere to park. But what about the residents of the area that should, in the same way I expect when I go to Montague Beach is parking, how do y'all feel? And, and, and is there any community organizing or strategizing to respond to this dynamic that's been created on the beach? The idea that uh, foreign direct investors have as assumed a degree of ownership and responsibility for the beach, but it appears are not engaging with the people who are the natural stakeholders for the beach. I would agree with you, Erin. As a matter of fact, when they were building that resort across from the Prime Minister's office, I passed, I, I, like I said, I used to go, as a child, we used to walk from Stapleton Gardens to Goodman's Bay. Goodman's Bay was clean, green, pristine. When they were building this resort, of course, now I reside in Fort Charlotte, as I said, for the past 20-something years. And I said, well, where are we supposed to park? You are being, building this multi-million dollar resort, which today, by the way, still does not have ample parking after it is finished. Pause. Let, let's just discuss it for a moment in terms of the spaces in which community organizers should be paying attention to. The developer themselves have, have explained their parking protocol. They don't have sufficient parking for the residents, the people who pay to be, to be there, right? And, and so... In terms of community organizing, right, I think a, sp a space is how do you create a, a body or an entity, a working space that can respond to these issues, right? That can write the Ministry of Works and say, hey, listen, I know that you have protocols. If they have been revised, please advise us where we can access them because as, as far as we are aware, this breaches, right, the provisions provided yes. in law. Um, that's where the Fort Charlotte Community Development Association comes in, okay. which is totally separate from the branch. Let me just make that clear. This is where that organization becomes very important. I mean, it's all well and good for Antoine Wallace to say, oh, well, where's the parking? But I am just one. It's not only me. That's where the advocacy comes in from the organization. And that's why development associations in every constituency are most important to take care of the needs and concerns of the resident. It ain't green. It ain't yellow. It ain't red. It ain't, you know, it's about the people. That highly upset me when I got there because I knew what Goodman's Bay. I'm not taking any money out of no one's mouth. I love the vendors there. Do your thing. Keep the beach clean. The jet ski operators, all well and good. Do it safely. But the parking for the public is most important. When we talked about the flooding in Fort Charlotte through our St. Albans Drive, when there's a function on Fort Charlotte, like, you know, Independence or whatever, they are through our corner. And now you talking... Nothing, I guess we need a hospital. <laughs> and now you're talking about a hospital too? Mm -hmm. So w what's going to happen? Uh, put on, I, go ahead, go ahead. I do believe that there needs to be more transparency before these things are put into plan. It seems like we... Consultation. Yeah, like consult us first. It seems like we are an afterthought in our own community. The community is for us. Mm -hmm. They go ahead and the powers that be, let's just say that, Good. Um, I, I never considered that during Independence Day that your community is adversely impacted. I, I mean, I see the cars, but I never realized that residents were, like I said, uh, negatively impacted. And I, I appreciate that you're bringing it to my attention. But we have a caller here who wants to engage you. So let me let this caller come in. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear us? Caller, go ahead. Kermit, there's nothing? 
Okay, call caller gone. Sorry about that caller. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I, I heard you there, uh, Johnny. You said that at least consult the community. Let, let, let your community be involved with decisions. And it seems as if many decisions are happening around you and that the community itself um, heritage it afterwards. Like you said, you're an afterthought. Let me see if I get this caller in now, and then I'll let you continue with the conversation. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Go ahead. Yeah, this is a very interesting and timely topic. And you talk about advocacy, right? But this goes at a higher level. Town planning, the Donnacle, the Le Control, Craig Delancey, because it starts at, that, at, at those areas. When it trickles down to the community level, the decisions are being made at the higher level. So our gatekeepers are failing us. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the wind project, you haven't satisfied parking, but you're allowed to build another structure. You're parking on the side of the road. You're parking in Goodman's um, Bay parking. You're parking in the prime minister um, parking lot. So how are you able to get approval to build a tower and you hadn't and you have not satisfa satisfactorily satisfied regular parking? It behooves me. And it goes to a, a deeper issue too. In communities, you wake up in a residential community, next day someone buys a house and turns the house into a triplex, and it totally alters your 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 dream, your living environment. And at your expense, you devalue my house because you turn a house into a triplex, people coming and going, 10, 12 cars up and down all night. So who's responsible? How are you allowed to change a residential or a single-family zone property into a multifamily property? Right. So this is a very timely topic that needs to be addressed. And town planning and building control needs to be held accountable. Look on Soldier Road. There's a hotel or, or, or medical facility going on on Soldier Road right there where um, um, Soldier Road headed by the red light by what? Soldier Road and Prince Charles headed towards Village Road. There's a big um, building going there. So it would alter the persons who bought their house. Um, it would alter their living environment at, at their expense. Who, who's making these decisions? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Colum. Um, Aaron, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the entire Fort Charlotte area, right, which was a once deemed as a residential area, has been rezoned. That's all of that beach where, which Mr. Anton Walsh was talking about. The entire area of West Bay Street, uh, Fort Charlotte, has been rezoned to be commercial. So I, I'm not sure if, if Johnny and, uh, and Anton, Anton is, is aware but you should expect more big high-rises high and, and uh, what do you call it, Airbnb hotels and, 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 and big condominiums to be built up. I'm surely that your community was advised that you, you have been rezoned, that um, big buildings is going to be happening in that area. Um, what is your community or how is your community being um, communicated, that type of information? Well... If you look at uh, my 15-point plan, it basically encompasses, and Aaron has given me some wonderful insight on yourself. I was not aware of the whole area being rezoned, but now that I think about it, it makes... Now, hold on, you read the whole... Look at the whole... The whole area. area. The whole strip. The whole strip. Wow. The, hold on, wait, now, the strip. The whole foreshore strip. The whole foreshore so strip. So from Nassau in. Street to Goodman's, Goodman's Bay. Bay, and then how far south do we go uh, in? From Goodman's Bay back to... The big hotel. Which, what do you mean the big hotel? The big hotel that ends the, uh, or the strip. No, no, I say you heading back east. We go from Nassau Street to Goodman's Bay. That's yes. that's east to west. Yes. Right. I'm and saying go south now. St straight to where the police station is on by Junkanoo Beach. All okay. of that has no, been. No, no. You're we, still talking about the Margarita Bell. You go in east, go east to, and west. Then you go back to Goodman's Bay, the big hotel, by the no. Prime Minister's office. Yeah. Right, no, but I'm talking about how far south. South. Oh, right, the anyway. opposite way. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I can't confirm how far south, but I'm, I'm talking about that. So don't that, worry about me. I just got strip no, no. I just got extremely excited because if they made the graveyard a commercial zone, I have a new project. <laughs> 
for 2025. What kind of project you have? I don't want to talk yet? about it the same way that the people didn't want to talk about the rezoning. Mm. It's, yeah. it's spontaneity. Yes, but <laughs> I, I must, you know, remember too now, under the last administration, that whole area in Prospect Ridge there was being considered for mm. housing, which was seemed quite astounding to me because basically all that is is swamp. Um, but that has since been laid to rest. Now, I must say on a, on a positive note, after my agitating, they tell me three years. I mean, I say three years, they say two. Saunders Beach, like I said, was the prodigal child, the, the child we don't check for. Lately, in the past, uh, what, four months, mm -hmm. I have seen a drastic change. I happen to be out there one day. I'm taking notes, writing on my computer. Um, Wi-Fi wasn't there yet. We have um, showers now. The, the bathroom is open, so I give kudos. There's the water on. Yeah, but hold on. The, <laughs> I give kudos to Mikhail Bottomy and Beaches and Parks. I got to give him credit where credit is due. Um, the bathrooms are now open, fully renovated. The showers are now working with foot pedals. The trees, thanks to the forestry division under environment and health, are now back up. The trees that were down for many months, okay, good stuff. Uh, there are two lights. So Saunders Beach good stuff. is back. Hold I on. need the Wi-Fi fixed. When we put stuff up, it just get put it up. Let's maintain it. Hold on, though. Hold on, though. We're not back. I mean, we're not back yet. <laughs> we're not quite back yet. No. Right? What measures have been in place, have been put in place to ensure that the issues that caused the bathroom to not be available do not return? Have we assigned cleaning attendants? Have we assigned security to man the beach? Because we're in a 24-7 tourist town. Tourists expect to be able to move about 24-7. Will people have access to the beach after 6 p.m. when the buses stop running and only taxis are running, right? Will people be made to feel like the bathroom is not for them? Also, I have another issue. People are fishing from the fish tail, the whale tails and the rocks with lines, they line fishing and they chum in the water on a, on a beach where people are supposed to go swimming. With regards to the bathrooms, the bathrooms are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. fully staffed by nice. beaches and parks. With regards to security, I have not seen security out there, but there is a constant police presence as they drive through because not only Bahamians are there, it's a touristy spot for pictures. You have a few, one or two of the vendors out there. They come and they take their pictures. Now they stay a little bit longer because the bathrooms are open. Now they can enjoy themselves and go in the water because they can take a shower. So all of these things are happening. But the bathrooms are staffed, security, and let's talk about the lifeguard issue. I personally, there was a video that was put up a couple of months ago and last year of a shark, sharks coming directly to the beach shore. To buy them be fishing? Yes. And they do yes. the same thing Which on Montague Beach? Which is illegal, by the way. You should not be fishing on a beach or around the rocks. It may be attractive there on Saunders Beach, but we cannot do it. And it, my grief was, we had a shark there just this morning at 10 o'clock, why wasn't there some warning or some sign or the beach shut down? Where are the lifeguards? I, in my 15-point plan and issue, why we should have a lifeguard. If we can put one there every day, especially, let's have one for the public holidays. Let me see if I can squeeze this caller okay. in right now. Uh, go ahead, Carly. Can you hear it? Hey, good morning, Mr. Neary. Good, good morning, Erin. Good morning, morning. And good morning to your guests. Good morning. Um, he is talking about Sanders Speech um, bathroom um, having uh, attendance and it's now open. I didn't even know it was closed. And I knew there was always attendance there unless they moved the attendance. So I see I see saying that the attendance that was there were originally there when they first opened it up. No, no. He, 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 was, he was responding to something that I said that suggested, right? Mm -hmm. That the the reason that the bathrooms were closed was because they were damaged by yes. right like like a little malfeasance a little nuisancey behavior, but that, would that have been possible if there were attendance and security 
right? So what is implied by my interrogation is that there were no staff, and that's why he responded in the way that he did. Right. The bathrooms oh, were oh. actually closed before the pandemic. Remember, there was a big to-do about it, the $2 million, $3 million bathroom, and then it closed. It was closed before but the pandemic. Was, but it was reopened. It was never reopened after the, the pandemic, ma'am. But it, I saw persons going in there. That don't mean I, it was I, open. That, that doesn't mean it was Which open. Which is why I asked about security. But now it is fully staffed and fully open. Showers are working. We need the sidewalks clean now. The trees are back up. We need a buoy line to protect the swimmers, Bahamian and tourists, from stopping the pleasure cruises and the jet ski guys from coming in there. That needs to happen also. I, I know we're almost... Thank you, caller. I know we're almost out of time, right? Mr. Wallace and Ms. Gentles, I'd like to invite you all on. I'm going to teeth you all from Newry uh, because I want to talk about, among other things, the intersection of social advocacy and political activism, right? I also want to talk about when you can't beat them, maybe you could use them to your advantage. Mm -hmm. I bet you if you bring some green scooter in there and tell them we need a sidewalk to make the, keep the green scooter safe so the tourists could use it, you'll have sidewalk right away. And perhaps we could build a, a symbiotic and healthy relations right between communities and foreign direct investors that create safe communities for both the tourist guest and the people who have to live on this beautiful plantation okay we're talking Amen. again to antoine antoine wallace and miss johnny gentles and they are community advocates in their their community the fort charlotte area how do we get in contact with you how can people join you on on these um missions in quotes Antoine. <laughs> okay. Well, my social media, for some reason, is has been going crazy this weekend, so I'm not on social media this weekend. I will be back on shortly next week. But you can find me directly on my Facebook page, A-N-T-O-I-N-E, middle initial C, W-A-L-L-A-C-E. You can always get me through Messenger on Facebook, Antoine C. Wallace. You will find that not only do I, I try to balance it, because not only am I an advocate for my Bahamian people and our culture, but I'm also an advocate internationally, and I have a lot of international commentary, especially with regards to how the United States elections and what they're doing and how they affect us as the Bahamas, as our community, and what's happening. In and I must say, go Kamala Harris, go Waltz Harris. Yeah. That's for another time. Let's go. Good. Let's go. I, I want to thank you very much, Antoine, Antoine Wallace, and again, Miss Johnny Gen Gentles. Thank you very much for coming on the show. We need more community activists, don't you think? Yeah, man, absolutely. Yeah. That, that's the missing block from national development. It's and, and what we'll do is just make space for them to come Yeah, okay? absolutely. This has been Guardian Radio AM with C.A. Nuri. And Naughty a, Johnny. And Naughty Johnny. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. <laughs> oh, God. What a senior choir here. Come on. Sing with me. Check it out. Sometimes you feel like giving up when you work so hard. But keep on striving, working, until you reach that star. I know it's hard to keep moving when you're climbing up a hill. But keep on going.